Hi guys and welcome back to Red Dog Gaming where today we are going through a brand new roster mod. Danny Mox Rosters Expanded Mod for Rome Total War Remastered. And this mod adds in about 30 new different types of units for you to play with, to have fun with, and most of them are elite. Basically the description of the mod is to try and make units um, elite units so that you can fight the Romans post Marian reforms late in the game. So in this we are going to be going through every single uh, faction and what's been added uh, and I think there's about 30 or so new units um, but some of them are recolored or reskinned units from other factions. But first things first we are Seleucia. We'll go through all the Hellenic factions first and the first ad is the Syrian Archers. Now these guys are present in quite a few of the Eastern Factions. And they basically allow the Eastern Factions now to have a long range missile option. Because a lot of them do not have this. And not having a long range missile option is very, very, very annoying <laughs> going into the game. Because the short range guys honestly have terrible, terrible range. Like the range is like here. Um, like it's 120 now is it normally 150 but it feels like it's about here and you're basically on the enemy before these guys can even start firing so of course morale of eight melee attack of seven which is pretty decent for an archer unit total defense of 10 six of which is armor so they will stand up to archer fire in a lot of cases with a missile attack of eight and a range of 170 and 30 ammunition so a very good option for these eastern factions that don't have the standard long range archer unit now on top of this for seleucia we have the royal peltasts which are classed as a spearman but they are a spearman with a bit of a difference they have three peeler which they fire into the enemy um, when they get going so they have a morale of 10 melee attack of 10 and a total defense of 23 guys 10 of which is defense skill, so they will do very, very well in combat, even for a spear unit. A very decent unit to add. And in the whole of this mod, guys, we're going to be comparing them to the standard legionary cohort, because these units have been designed to stand up to post Marium reform um, Roman units. So a legionary cohort, just so you know, has a morale of 10, 9 melee, 13 missile attack, so slightly higher than these guys, and a 22 defense. So these guys are stronger than a legionary cohort. So that is a very, very good addition for the Seleucids, although the Seleucids do themselves have a very decent roster. Now, over here, we can see that Macedon also has the Royal Peltas, exactly the same stats. So that is the Macedonian unit that's been added. Over with Greece, we have these Thorax Swordsmen. Look at these guys. One thing to note though, guys, with all these units, please do put them on realistic um, color scheme rather than vibrant because they have built the textures for the realistic color scheme. But look at the effort that's gone into this, guys. They look absolutely stunning. I love these guys' shields. But these Thorax Swordsmen, morale of 10, melee attack of 19, missile attack of 13 with one only one peeler though this time, and a total defense of 19. But one thing to remember, guys, with these Thorax Swordsmen, they are armor-piercing with that primary weapon. So they should shred legionary cohorts, really, with their um, with their swords. Oh, they're carrying their javelins at, at, at this moment in time. Oh, look at this beast. Look at that beard. So they're carrying their javelins, but they do have a sword, as you can see in there. So they use their armor-piercing primary weapon, the sword, to deal with the enemy now let's look over here and we have with the carthaginians they have added in the standard scutarii which is an okay unit that's found in spain for the spanish for morale which is pretty trash nine melee attack 12 defense and a missile attack of 13 basically better iberian infantry really is all you can be looking at with those guys but then they have added the libyan infantry with a 13 missile attack with one peeler ready to go these guys are also armor piercing very similar to the thorax spearman with a 10 morale melee attack of 9 and a defense of 20 so slightly worse than a legionary cohort who has 9 melee and 22 defense um, and they're 13 missiles and i believe two missiles um, or three, I can't quite remember. 
but they are definitely something that will stand up to the legionary cohorts later on in the game at least standing up so that you can hammer and anvil them in the back i mean these guys and the sacred band should be good enough for you guys to deal with those drastic legionary cohorts later on in the game or you can just play parthia and just get there before the marion reforms happen which we did in our parthia campaign uh, because pulse archers are so op so over to egypt which has the largest amount of troops added so far guys so we have the scythe chariots which are a pontic unit uh, but added to the egyptians and the theme with egypt is adding in hellenic units because obviously the Egyptians at the time were Hellenic. They were not <laughs> pharaohs and ancient Egypt. But of course, the developers decided to go with ancient Egypt. I'm guessing, you know, to give a bit of variety. But of course, it's not historically accurate. So you do get the Scythe Chariots, which have, the Pontics have, which are a great addition. 8 morale, 15 melee attack with 4 hit points. Total defense is only one and no armor, though. So they are very susceptible to archers, guys. Always remember that. And then they've added the standard Greek cavalry to the Egyptians. Although you do have good, decent light cavalry options already. So I can't see you, you know, wanting these guys over the desert cavalry or the Nile cavalry. The desert cavalry do you well enough, but a good addition nonetheless. On top of that, they also have a unit of Royal Peltas with that 12 missile attack with three peeler and a melee attack of 10 defense of 23 very strong unit and look at these guys they look awesome i love the design look at that shield look at the detail that went into that shield is that a scarab is that a mud beetle that's pretty cool golden shields golden helms very cool on top of that they have added phalanx pikemen into these guys as well as well as the royal pikemen so you get the seleucid pike options just to add that hellenic feel once again to egypt which is great. They are just recolored standard units, as you can see in the Egyptian style. Very nice. And then on top of that, they also get the Syrian archers, which we've seen before, guys. The long range archer, archer unit. They also, obviously, Egypt also has the Pharaoh's archers. So you can choose between the two. I'm assuming the Pharaoh's archers are probably slightly better than these guys, but these guys give you other options. Uh, to train them without probably without a large city i'm assuming and then of course they've added in the beasts of the hellenic uh, cavalry options the companion cavalry so let's get over over here guys to parthia so what have they added to my favorite nation no i'm joking seleucids are my favorite parthia are quite close though they're very good parthian swordsmen very similar to the thorax swordsmen good morale very well armored and can sap the only difference is they, um, they don't have an armor-piercing primary weapon. So although their me melee attack of 12 is very high, with a defense of 23, they can stand up to legionary cohorts. They don't have the peeler option, and they don't have an um, armor-piercing primary weapon. So slightly weaker than the Thorax Swordsman. But if you want to play Parthia with some infantry, this has become an option, guys. Because before, there is no option to play with infantry. Hillman and Eastern... Eastern infantry just are not up to scratch and your horse archers are so OP anyway that it doesn't matter um, that you don't have infantry. But these guys can kind of make you think twice about not using any infantry in your Parthian armies. On top of that, they have the elite Persian archers. I don't know why they're called the elite because I believe they have exactly the same stats as the other guys. But once again, the Persian archer. Long range archer option, which is sorely needed because you have long range cavalry archers. So why would you not have long range uh, foot archers as well? It just makes no sense that the developers didn't add a long range foot archer option for Parthia. Um, but yes, the elite Persian archers are finally added, which is fantastic. And then they have added the Armenian heavy spearmen, which look like they're very long spears compared to what they do in the base game. So they have a phalanx formation, uh, which is great. They have bonus fighting cavalry, of course. Total defense of 17, morale of 6, uh, melee attack of 7, alt attack of 5. So you don't want these guys out of phalanx really, guys. But a 17-7 for a phalanx unit is very decent. How does that compare to, say, the Royal Pikemen? 17-10. So they're not that far off, the Royal Pikemen. They're a decent unit, well-armored, 
good defense, good shield. So let's have a look at what they've added for Pontus, guys. So Syrian archers, once again, another archer unit, long range archer option for Pontus, which they didn't have before. And then we have the Pontic Swordsman. Very similar to the Thorax Swordsman. Look at these guys. I just keep wanting to stop and just take in the beautiful designs of some of these guys. They're fantastic. These guys are basically the Thorax Swordsman, but uh, reskinned for Pontus with a 22 defense, 10 armor, um, which is fantastic. 10 morale, 9 melee attack, and 13 missile attack, but only one peeler. What were the Thorax Swordsmen? Yeah, the Thorax Swordsmen are slightly less armored. So the Pontic Swordsmen are actually quite decent. Yeah, they are they are better, the Pontic Swordsmen. So you have a heavy infantry option with Pontus as well, which is fantastic. And these guys, of course, will stand up to legionary cohorts. Let's get over to our last of this battle, guys. But we do have more factions to come, believe it or not. So again, Armenia, the elite Persian archers. And here we have the Armenian heavy warriors. Look at these boys. You would not want to face these boys in a fight they remind me of the uh, what are they call the kaduk kaduk g i can't remember that are the uh, sassanid uh, mace wielding troops in barbarian invasion they remind me very much of them 25 defense guys which 15 of which is armor so they are very good armor basically cataphracts on the ground and they are effective against armor armor piercing primary weapon that has a melee attack of 12 these guys are beasts these guys are absolute beasts and they have effective uh, excellent morale as well so you really if you are playing armenia that's really going to make you think maybe i shouldn't just be playing with horse archers because these guys are extremely extremely strong boys extremely strong right then guys so we've ticked off the hellenic factions most of the eastern factions so let's now look at the barbarian factions and the few of the others that are left over thank you very much guys i'll see you on that next map here we are guys on the second battle map and we are with the barbarian factions and a few of the others i didn't forget about thrace as being a hellenic faction uh, but they're in here as well. So added to the Gauls, we have these Barbarian Legionaries. Very interesting. 12 morale, which is huge. Armor-piercing primary weapon. So these spear, these sorry, these swords are armor-piercing. And look at them. They are beastly. A lot of detail going in. I love the shields as well. Very, very nice. Melee attack of 13. Total defense of 22. So these guys will actually wipe the floor with legionary cohorts if they come up against them. Extra morale, very well armored. All that stuff. That is fantastic. Combat bonus in woods and snow, which is amazing. And they have the uh, peeler as well. Only one of them, but they have a peeler. And added to the goals, we have the berserkers that we didn't have before. Of course, we all know the berserkers. Absolute beast. God, this guy looks like he is ready to kill a lot of romans look at him look at him he's an angry man a very angry man but yes the berserkers ready to go as well and over here we have germania who already have a very decent unit roster check out my unit roster top five non-roman unit rosters because hint hint germania might be in there so of course, they have added to them the Chosen Swordsman, which they didn't have before. They just had the normal Swordsman. So they've got the Decent Swordsman option, which are pretty well armoured. Nice defence of 17 and a melee attack of 13, which is really good. On top of them, they have the Naked Fanatics, which I hesitated to add. I don't know. Did they have the Naked Fanatics before? Actually, I think they did. So just ignore that, guys. But then added to them, we have these guys... The Fierce Warriors, no armor piercing, but look at these guys. Look at these huge swords that they wield and these shields with wolves on. Very scary boys. 21 defense, 8 armor, 8 defense skill, which is really, really strong. 14 melee attack and 14 morale. These guys will hardly break. They will take a lot to get them to break. And you can see they look exactly like the Berserkers ready to go in to battle 
Very nice addition for the Germanians. Very strong unit there. And then the Britannians over here. We have Slingers added to their roster because before all they had were the Head Hurlers as their missile option. So now they have Slingers. They don't get an Archer option, but they get the standard Slingers, which as you can see are pretty trash. But it gives you an option other than the Head Hurlers. But the Head Hurlers are so OP, guys. Get the Head Hurlers. <laughs> And then we have, again, the Barbarian Legionaries. I believe the same stats as the Gallic ones, but they just look a little bit different. Nice shields there. Very cool. In the blue. Very nice. Ready to go. Is that some bull horns or something on their, on their cloak? And then across here, we have Dacia that also has the Fierce Warriors again. Same design, just a bit different brown. Very strong, very, very strong unit, in fact. That is an incredibly strong unit. I don't know who would win out of these guys versus the uh, Pontic... What was it? What were they called? The Pontic Mace-wielding guys. Uh, but <laughs> they would do some damage to any Roman legionnaire that comes across them. Right, into the desert, we have the Namidians, who get a desert cohort, which is just so much better than the Numidian uh, legionaries that you get as an option as well. They have an armor-piercing primary weapon, which I believe is their sword. Uh, missile attack of 16. They can also form Testudo. Oh, that's one thing to note with these guys. They, the Barbarian legionaries can form Testudo as well, which is awesome. Good morale of 10, melee attack of 12, and a total defense of 23. So as we we're saying, 9 melee for the legionary cohort and 22 defense. So these guys are better than the legionary cohort. 16 missile attack is obscenely good as well. So they will do an absolute... Like, they will just ravage enemy ranks with their peeler. I think that's equivalent to the Praetorian cohort's missile attack, which is very strong. Very nice design once again. Namidian boys ready to go. Look at that. Is that a griffin with a deer head behind it? I don't know, but it looks cool anyway. And then over here, we have Scythia, which has added to it the Fierce Warriors. Once again, uh, just reskinned in the Scythian Burnt Orange. Very nice. And then on top of that, they also get the Chosen Swordsman. So if you're feeling lucky and you don't fancy Horse Archer stack, Death stack, Horse Archer killing OP everything... Yes, those are words. Rearrange them to make a sentence, please, someone. Um, then you can get some good infantry options now with Scythia, which is always nice to see. Over here, we have Thrace, the last faction we're going to talk about. They have the Bronze Plate Pikemen, guys. Very nice looking unit. Phalanx unit, 8 morale, 10 melee attack, and 17 defense. I believe very similar to the Bronze Shield Pikemen. Look at that face. I'm assuming... That's Medusa. Medusa, damn, Medusa was ugly, bro. Look at that. Medusa was ugly. Bronze, uh, bronze plate design, though, looking very, very nice. A good phalanx unit there for you. They also have the Sarissa Cavalry, which is a light cavalry unit. Only four defense, which is pretty trash. But their morale of eight and melee attack of eight, uh, with a charge of ten, is pretty decent. So it's a very... Smash and grab Lancer unit ready to go. So you want to ram these guys into the back of the enemy and pull them out straight away because they will just die if they stay in melee. Because that alt attack, oh, that alt attack's eight as well, but the defense of four is very poor. So it's a good, decent light cavalry, very ready to go. And then, of course, added to Thrace, we have the Royal Peltas that have been added to a lot of the Hellenic factions, kind of a legionary type unit, just with a small circular shield rather than a large square shield. So, so guys, that is the unit roster. The only faction we didn't cover is Spain. And I don't believe there's anything added for Spain. So, awesome guys. I think this unit roster mod is very, very, very cool. I really like it. I think it's awesome. Basically means that if you're playing the Romans, you get more of a challenge later on. So, you get to experience enemy factions having some decent, better troops. Um... And on top of that, if you're playing one of these factions, you get some options that are probably stronger than the Ro that stronger than the Roman options, and can actually stand up to legionary and Praetorian cohorts without just completely running away, which is awesome. So apparently these guys are running, but run slow mo. 
Um, but yes, we're going to finish off with a little battle. So guys, Gallic Berserkers for once. With legionary, barbarian legionaries. Very cool. We will win, of course. They only have three factions and a lot less troops. So we will win, but, you know, it's fine. I want you to get into those royal pale tasks. I want you to, uh, I want you to do a bit of a war cry first, though. But yes, looking at this mod, it looks amazing. Really good fun. Would like to see them add some units for Spain. Maybe add some archers to a couple of other factions. Uh, maybe the Britons. Right, you guys get in. Well, war cry first, and then in. Yeah, they're going mad now. Fire your jabbies. See, like, they, they did decent in the charge. Go on, Berserkers. Let's go. Let's get in after your jabbies have been thrown. Your jabbies should be killing them pretty nicely. Go on, Berserkers. They're dying. But they're going mad. Wavering those royal peltasts. Okay, these, those guys have run. Let's get after them. Come on, Berserkers. Let's go. But yeah, this mod looks awesome. Look at the uh, look at the AI. Well done, AI. Flanking a phalanx unit. But, I mean, the fierce warriors, I probably would have used them to flank. Where are those Royal Peltas going? They're running away. But yeah, it looks really cool. Get, adds an extra challenge if you're the Romans. Uh, gives you some cool units if you're not. I mean, the Hellenic factions have got a lot of love. Egypt, of course, like we've seen. Uh, had a lot of love giving it Hellenic units. So if you wanted to kind of play Hellenic Egypt, that option is there now, which is awesome. Come on, Berserkers. Let's go. Okay, got them routing. Counter charge, counter charge. Oh, these poor Sarissa Cav. They just don't have the defense. So that's the race down. So yeah, I probably will play with this mod at some point. Which would be very fun. Look at these fierce, fierce warriors are doing some serious damage. Look at them. They are beastly. And they're impetuous at the minute as well. But we do have some Dacian fierce warriors coming in. Let's watch them charge. Here they go. Oh, don't ruin it. You ruined the charge, stupid thing. Stupid person. Gallic boy. Why would you do this? Look at the berserkers. They're just so happy. They run with such such dainty abandon. <laughs> Get there. we still got a jabby to go. Get there, boys. The fierce warriors over here. Oh, the desert cohorts the Numidians as well. So we have the barbarian legionaries and fierce warriors versus these boys. It's time to go. Time to get those... Uh, Get those uh, berserkers in there. Berserkers, no, you're running the wrong way, my boys. Stop chasing them down. Come on. This is the problem with berserkers. Oh, they've not got a target nearby. They're just. I oh, listen to them go. That's how they. That's how they. They spoke back in the day, apparently. Come on, after that desert go up. Oh yes. We've broken this fierce warriors by this fierce warriors. Come on, the boys! This is awesome. I, I missed big Rome Total War. Like little, it sounds stupid, but little battles. I used to play online a lot on this game when I was a kid. I used to have a lot of good fun playing, you know, eight-man battle royale. Which I wish they would bring back into Total War. You know, like battle royales. Imagine a Napoleon Total War battle royale. That would be unreal. Apparently, they can fire the jabbies from there, which is. Whoa, look at those. That is some long range, bro. Wow. That is it. Well done, my lovely berserkers and barbarian legionaries. Um, no, we won't do that, advisor. But thank you for your advice. So, guys, let me know what you think of this mod in the description down below. I think it's awesome. It's great. Adding a load more units into the game, which is fantastic. Ready to go for uh, versus the Romans or for yourself or as the Romans against them. Really cool units. Um, adding those elite, elite tier units into the game, which is fantastic. 
Let me know what you guys think. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff, guys. It really helps the channel out. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.